Hey guys, it's John from Album Review TV. It's time for a review of the Hyam debut album, Days Are Gone. It took me a little bit to figure out how to pronounce that name, and I figured out their names themselves pretty quickly, the three sisters that make up this group, Alana, Esty, and Danielle. But the name itself, I actually had to go look up like interviews with the band. I have to do that sometimes to figure out how to pronounce things. Not Haim, like I originally thought, or even Heim. Anyways, getting back to the important thing here, this is a band that started in 06, didn't really get serious until 2012, I would say, is when they really started buckling down, it seems, touring, working on a record. Finally, the debut record comes together in 2013 and came out in the end of September of this year. And it's actually probably going to end up on my favorite records of 2013 list, honestly, because this thing just drew me in more and more the more I listened to it. It's got a little bit of everything in terms of rock and roll on here. They've got 70s influence style as a, a whole, really. I would say Fleetwood Mac is a huge huge comparison that gets made to this band quite often and I hate to be that guy that does it once again but there's a reason so many people are comparing the two groups. Most of these songs have positive and upbeat vibes even though some of the lyrical content is a little bit darker and that sort of thing. Uh, it, uh, it tends to overcome that within the song. It's almost like you know in a TV show where they work through a problem or something like that. I feel like the sisters are working through problems and coming out most of the time with positive results. Falling is the opening track on this record and it immediately calls to mind those Fleetwood Mac similarities that I was speaking of. These California girls sound top notch on this track. It feels like a smooth ride down a river. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac, anyone, because the vocal harmonies when they like actually do happen on this track they sound spectacular. The vocals stack and layer perfectly with the simple yet compelling drum and guitar arrangements here on this one. The track just immediately jumped out to me as a standout on this record. Lyrically, many of these songs are just empowering, uplifting, relatable, and flat out just well penned, well written. It's all about finding your niche as a songwriter and I think they've just kind of found that together as a group writing all of the musical arrangements here. Now you might be wondering what track it was that helped me find and discover this band, and that would be the single The Wire. It was not the first single released by the band or anything like that, but it's actually one I heard on Alt Nation driving home one night, and it, it compelled me to check out their album, picked it up, and I don't regret it at all. I'm really excited about this track in particular though, because it's just got these really, really chilled out vibes. Like as does much of this record, it's like chill guitar rock and roll. It succeeds with its fun guitar work and catchy chorus and the finger snaps that they throw in there. You've also got to love that short but sweet synth powered outro. Nice touch, girls. If I Could Change Your Mind continues those fast but restrained guitars that appear on the majority of this record. It's a breezy blast of rock and roll that's just really fun and takes the listener to a good place. Despite the somewhat saddening subject matter, I talked about that before, they just really have a good way of putting a spin on things, I think. One of the other singles is titled Forever, and it's been around for a while, but I think it found its way onto this debut album because of popularity with fans and it's just connecting with people. And, dear lord, the chorus on this song is straight 70s ecstasy. I can't help but feel like this group is a modern incarnation of Fleetwood Mac. I know I'm being that guy, once again, that's just, you know, saying, oh, they're gonna be the next Fleetwood Mac, and that sort of thing. I don't think that. I don't think that they're the next Fleetwood Mac or anything like that. I'm just saying that they've got a lot of that cool energy that Fleetwood Mac had for their time for present day. I think they definitely have their own musical identity and this album really as a whole proves their diversity. You know, you've got a track like Forever, but then let's go ahead and move to a track like My Song 5. My Song 5 is an experimental track that really shifts gears from anything else on this record. There's so many different sounds on this track that I'm not even sure quite how I feel about it. Yes, I am drawn to it because with more and more like repeated listens, it's got some like energy that I cannot deny. It's something that's really interesting to me, but at the same time, I can't quite get on board fully, at least yet, because it just feels a little bit inconsistent to me. Now, there's songs that I don't dig as much as others on the record. My least favorites probably being Honey and I and Go Slow. 
and even Let Me Go, that one has grown on me some. It's the closing track on this record, Days Are Gone. It shows off a more vulnerable side of the group, and that's actually quite nice to hear. The track really builds the more and more it goes on, and really turns into a solid and honest closer for this record with some great guitar work. Now when I was mentioning them having a lot of influences, they've mentioned multiple times that hip-hop is an influence to them, and I re never really like paid attention to that or noticed it until the title track from this record, which is called Days Are Gone, of course. Hip-hop and other modern genres definitely influence this track through and through and make for a solid listen. But is it something that's memorable? I think for this track at least, that's something that only time is going to tell. And finally, let's talk about the track Don't Save Me, which has turned into one of my overall favorites, I have to say. It's held together by long sustained hits on the synths mixed with this delicately crafted guitar line that really mixes things up and the vocals that really stand out and shine here and mix the sisters' voices together quite nicely. Backing vocals can be a huge key to tracks actually succeeding and breaking through, and this is a prime example of it really working here on Don't Save Me. What did you guys think about Haim's debut album, Days Are Gone? For me personally, I really did enjoy this thing, and even though I was a little bit hesitant towards it, at the beginning and I just saw a lot of similarities between other bands. The more I heard it, the more I heard all of the complexities to the music, all of these sounds that I missed the first time around. If you really listen to these tracks, they really pour themselves into this and just add in a lot of extra things that you won't hear unless you listen carefully. 4.5 out of 5 for me for Days Are Gone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and let me know what I should review next because right now I'm kind of going through and uh, reviewing albums that I missed in recent months. I'm thinking I might do a review of Katy Perry's Prism and Mayday Parade's Monsters in the Closets along with my top 50 songs of 2013 and of course my top 15 albums of the year like I always do. And I will be doing a giveaway along with that uh, just so you know, just throwing that out there. Get excited for that. Share this video. Share the channel. Help it grow. We're almost to 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Album Review TV, Beyond the Reviews. I will see you very soon.